Welcome everyone to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. My name is Andrew. This is my lovely wife, Nona. And for the first time on the show, we have a virtual guest, uh, not K underscore US on Twitter, who has been like the man of the law telling me everything I need to know about several different legal cases. The man of the law. I yeah. like that. And uh, I will let him introduce himself because I don't want to butcher his name. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so not K, just fine. Okay. I don't care either way. Uh, but yeah, I'm not with, I'm not other way. Just so you know, but I just understand the law. I, I, I did take law classes when I was in college, but that's as far as my legal expertise go, but I just read a lot. That's all. That's fair. That's more than we do. That's more effort than most people on YouTube do. <laughs> <laughs> what reading? No, I mean, yeah, well reading, but reading the law. I mean, that's, that's like two steps there reading in general and reading comprehension. Most of them don't make it past our thumbnails before they have some comment to make. True. Facts. So, so yeah, um, wanted to have you on, wanted to talk about, I, I, man, I see, you know, all the different, uh, tweets and things that you have, uh, regarding FOIAs and different requests of all these various different people. I don't follow all of them, but of course, you know, we, we had a lot of back and forth on the Mike Glover case, which he is back tomorrow. Is that right? Uh, today is the 8th. I'm guessing, yeah, start to work tomorrow. Yeah. So for people watching this, it'll have already happened because this episode will probably come out Thursday. Yeah. So whatever comes of that comes of that. Uh, but we don't have to talk about that. I don't, it's kind of beating a dead horse at this point. Um, but yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Kind of, you know, some of your history, I, if you, if, do you want to talk about your work and what you do professionally or? Uh, sure. Um, my, I'm primarily a defense contractor. I work in, uh, defense and for the last, uh, 10, over 10 years now. And so I've been, I, I, I'm deaf by the way, so I don't work for the military. I don't work in the military. I work for the military. So look at difference. And I, I just do whatever job that comes my way and I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, I've been at, uh, a couple of defense companies, and then I've also worked at Dallas Air Force Base. I was also at Hill Air Force Base, and so that's why I talked about Utah, because, you know, Mike Glover coming up, that's why I'm, I'm a little familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm back back in Florida. I used to live in Florida before, but I moved back to Florida just recently, so I'm pretty happy about being back in my state. So not a veteran at all, just conveniently been a defense contractor? Uh... Yeah, I mean, it pays, but I, I put, if I had the ability to join the military, I would have, would have, but this was just my way around that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, well, I know that the guys that I served with, you know, appreciate most contractors, not all. I mean, there are some that, there are some jobs that we absolutely hate them. Um, like what? Like uh, uh, our uh, mechanics when I was at Benning, mm -hmm. they're the absolute worst. Like you could not get anything fixed in a reasonable amount of time because there, there's no sense of urgency with them in that job because uh, they're paid, you know, what they're paid versus if the first arm comes down in any other unit, like, or while you're deployed and you're like, Hey, I need those vehicles on the line, get parts, get them fixed. Now it happens. Gotcha. Versus the contract and mechanics were not so good. Um, I didn't eat a lot in the DFAC. So I never really had to deal with any of the cooks or chefs or anything that were contractors. Um, when I was in Korea, I did, mm -hmm. but, and actually our unit had, or our unit actually ran the dining facility that was closest to me. Mm -hmm. So being the medic, I kind of was like, Hey, you know, uh, we want to eat a little bit earlier, a little bit late. Like I, I had a little bit more say around like the schedule for my guys than I did anywhere else gotcha and that doesn't really apply everywhere but that was completely um run by the military versus kind of a split operation i think the one on fort uh, or not fort benning the one on camp casey which is on fort benning was exclusively run by contractors so there was no way around their schedule gotcha they prepared food you know for the ranger students when they were needing mres and stuff like that but outside of that like it just sucked so 
but that's that's working one to one. Like there, obviously, there's defense contractors that don't actually typically interact with service members on a day to day basis. Like somebody building a missile system mm -hmm. isn't going to be right there unless they're working on integrations and testing and stuff like that. It. So you said you work IT primarily. Um, that is not primarily my background. I mean, it is one of the things I do. Uh, the the stuff I've done in the past was I was on the F thirty five program. Uh, nice. For example, and so I was a flight data engineer uh, primarily. And for example, so for so think about it this way: plane goes out before the plane goes out on a forty. You have to you have to prepare the airplane for deployment. And so it depends on the mission profile that they have, where, whether it's going to be, say, for example, air to air or jamming or interdiction and so on and so forth. There's many different mission mission type profile. A lot of people derive the F-35, obviously, because, you know, it's a $1.8 trillion program, even though that's not really the accurate number. It's, it's actually the, the life of the program. So, for right. example, if the program were to die today, um, it's not going to be $1.8 trillion. It's going to be somewhere in the low $400 billion, because that's how much money has been spent. The, up to that the, point. Low the low $400 billion. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. Let's talk about and, like, it, 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 it can vary a conservative estimate. And, um, but... The thing about it is that so people are going, oh, for one point it's a one trillion dollar air supplement. Oh no, that's not how it works. Um that that operation and maintenance. So for example, with the vehicle for you, you know the operation and maintenance car, like factories and everything. So it's always they all have their own budget. So uh X amount of money that could go into feeding a specific piece of equipment. It's for, for our audience watching, listening, if you're not familiar with the military or anything like that or budgeting at all, it'd be the equivalent of taking your sticker price of your vehicle from the dealership and then factoring in all of your fuel costs, insurance costs, maintenance costs, oil changes, tires, tire rotation, bundling all of that into what the number is that you see essentially, you know, for the final product. So you add all that together and he's right, like the plane is still fucking expensive. Mm -hmm. Neither of us could ever afford one. <laughs> <laughs> it is that it got reasonably affordable for the military now. Uh, for example, just the F thirty five A cost alone, you know, if the flyaway cost is roughly about um seventy eight million dollars right now, I think. That was the last number because you keep going down as you build more airplanes. And uh but the F thirty five B is roughly about eighty five million eighty five million because it's it's a two hundred aircraft airplane. Yep. And um and the F thirty five C, which is gonna be the carrier version. That is still in the pre-deployment phase where the Navy is still checking it out because the Navy is, um, they're not too enthusiastic about it because um, they have two different things. They, they, they like the F-18 defined. And two, they have another program called NGAD. And they're, they're thinking that's going to be possibly taking the place of the F-35. So they kind of just, uh, but they still have a buy order of F-35. Is the F-35 CV tall? Or no? Um, it's a sea tall aircraft. It just it just um it's, it's gonna be carried along uh with the catapult and so I think they're touching on the um I, think was, I can't remember which I think the Eisenhower maybe, uh one of these aircraft. And uh a lot of people don't know the difference, but when you look at the front of it, the wingspans are much wider. Right. And so um so it it, it looks like a just a wider airplane. I remember um, when, I don't know if you're familiar with Cedar Point, but when they unveiled the top thrill dragster, I was like middle school age, I think. And that was the biggest, that was the selling point of like how cool this roller coaster that is a haul of like 10 seconds long. You wait like three hours in line to ride a 10 second long roller coaster, but it's because you got to experience close to the G forces of a carrier launch because it used the same system. It used the same hydraulic ram system and it just you sit down on this thing did and, you do it yeah yeah did it several times i mean i haven't been there since i was in like high school but um yeah so it's it's supposed to be a dragster so it takes off in a straight line for a quarter mile roughly i think then goes like straight up mm -hmm. and then does kind of a little loop and then falls back down on the other side when they first unveiled it they didn't have everything correct and one of two things would happen because it releases you at some point, it, like the carrier uh, mechanism that launches the aircraft, uh, the planes does, you know, it doesn't hold on. If the plane doesn't get up to speed, it's just falling off the edge. That's basically the same. Did anybody get hurt? 
Yeah, yeah, lots of people. Oh my god. Yeah. So, <laughs> one like I said, one of two things would happen. It would either take off and then go for its upward motion, but it wouldn't have enough momentum either due to the weight or whatever was going on, mm -hmm. and it would like fall back down. So you would ride it backwards, <laughs> or it would. I would take that alternative over getting injured. Because there's there's a point there's a point at the top where it rolls. Mm -hmm. And you would just sit there upside down. And that is what oh happened gosh. the majority of the time. Yeah. Oh, it's so scary. Oh my God. And I think it goes, I think it goes from like zero to like 120 in like two seconds or three. Wow. It's something crazy like that. Well, like yeah, underneath yeah. it, projectile vomit, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's roughly about what the catapult uh launch be did. It, it just uh they 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 put it full blast and then it goes down the one way. Uh the reason why they go full blast is well they have enough put momentum. In, or in, in order to keep it when it's away from the carrier. Yeah. Yeah, that whole, I've watched, I've watched several videos about how carriers work and some of the other planes that they've landed on and launched from, from carriers, which is kind of insane. Um, but what the biggest thing that most people don't even understand or realize is that when they land, they ramp to full throttle. Because if they miss the hook, mm -hmm. they're not going to know immediately. So they ramp up to full throttle just in case they miss the hook and just have to keep going. Yep. They take right back off again. So yeah, they, yeah, that, that's man, crazy. Being, being a, a pilot that lands on a carrier is like, that takes skill. A totally. Yeah. There's a couple different kinds of pilots that everybody respects. And that's one of them. Uh, dude, there's another way, uh, they have a, what's called the barricade. And, uh, if they put the barricade up and it's supposed to get a big ass long neck, and they don't they don't go full throttle on that. They get up to hit the gamble. They're not they're not gonna be able to make it. I think I've seen something. They typically do that like if the landing gear is damaged or something like that. Um, couple factors. Hydraulic failure primarily will be the biggest one because um one of the engines doesn't have enough power. Gotcha. So so they could have an engine out or both engines, and they get they gotta get it in there right away. But hydraulic um, for the landing gears could be another factor where they're not they're not sure that they're going to be able to hold on, or they don't have a tail hook. That's that's a lot. Like, I, I, there's so much risk associated with that. I just I don't think that I would be <laughs> that would for one really for one like okay I'll go out on a boat if I know that I'm coming back like the same day. Like I'll go out fishing or whatever. And come back. Okay. You're not going to catch me out at sea for days or months or weeks at a time. I absolutely do not want to live out on the water. No. Really? You think that I would want to join the Navy? No. Or the Marine Corps? No. Oh, you wouldn't fit in the Navy bunkers. <laughs> you mean the boats? You're, you're, no, like when you go underneath for where you sleep and stuff. You The bunk room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. literally like would not fit. <laughs> There's a there's a battleship uh, museum here in North Carolina or in Wilmington and uh, it's oh uh, yeah yeah and yeah I'm always walking <laughs> like this. He uh, knocked his shin climbing up one of the stairs because he was just so big and it was just gushing blood. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I was in South, South, South Carolina a while back. They have a Patriot Point outside of Charleston. Mm -hmm. And they have the one. I think it, it, it is about us up there as well. And I forget what it is called. I think it's called the South Carolina, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. All uh, of I, just, I have to look it up real quick. You have uh, Battleship, uh, South Carolina. If I know. Um, I know that some of them are opening up because uh, we just saw a video. Some of them are opening up for like overnight. They're turning them to like Airbnb. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you, you can sleep. eat in the mess hall. Oh, Am I saying yeah. mess hall right? Yeah. yeah. It could carry you, actually. It could carry you, actually. It's uh, the Yorktown. That might have been the one that I saw the video about. Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, when you were talking about going over to um, I did volunteer a couple of times, but I never got taken up. And basically, it would have had me deployed with either the Marine or with the Navy as uh, part of F-35C. And I was at it. Oh, yeah, so I'll do it. I kept getting rejected for it. That they had other people that were more experienced than I was, and I, but I wouldn't have had a problem. So, would you say that having hearing loss? Did, were you born deaf? 
Uh, that's a theory, uh, but likely no. So I'm I'm just curious because I was just wondering if that's ever been like an impeding factor, you know, for your position where they're like, hey, we need somebody that's alert and you know can hear. Like, what what kind of things, what kind of measures would you take if you were selected to be able to deploy with a unit? Um, not really. I mean, uh, most of the most of the mitigation factors, for example, is, um, I try to be out of a, let, let me think, um, high hazard area, for mm-hmm. example, and with a pretty obvious, because, you know, for example, if you're on the flight deck, stay away from rear of engine, for example, uh, stay, in, uh, stay away from the intake and so on and so forth. And I mean, a lot of that can be, uh, mitigated, not a big deal. But when it comes to noise perception issues, um, for the most part, no. Interesting. What about um, like a classroom scenario? Now, you know, in in a professional setting where you're doing like continuing education, do you sit as like a anybody else in the class would, or do you sit off to the side so you can see your peers as well to to stay engaged? Like, how does that work? It's been decades since I've, I've done that, but uh, if when I was a kid, I would typically sit out in front and then go that way to be able to perceive things. But now that I'm older, I can comprehend things better. I don't have that issue so much, so I can just sit in pretty much like the middle of the auditorium and so on and so forth. I'll be fine. So it's not total hearing loss, just. Um. So how how this worked is when I was born, I had a diaphragm with hernia. So, and so basically hernia was terrible, but it was complicated by the fact that I also have another condition called abdominal status aversus, and which means my, my organ go on the other side. Oh. So, so that complicated my surgery even further. So the theory is that my hearing loss was caused by drugs. Too much uh, drugs. Yeah. That is possible. And, yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> then, and then when my parents found out that I was uh, deaf around 18 months, um, they sent me there. They sent me to school where they taught kids how to talk. They absolutely did not want to send me to a school where kids had to learn to do sign language. Now I do know sign language because I took that in high school, but I did not. I'm not a believer in it either. A lot of people are going, "Oh, they got you an outdoor language," and I'm like, "No, that's not my thing." So are you a good lip reader too? Um, generally, for the most part, yes. Do you prefer to see somebody's mouth move or the fact that our mics are covering our mouths? Is that impeding? I, I, I perceive things better than I did a decade ago, so I'm good now. Gotcha. <clears throat> so it's a Monday and you're home. Do you get to work from home exclusively or do you have to go in at all? Uh, it's my day off, so I work, oh, I work well, on... Oh, thank you for giving us your day off. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. No, 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 no. It, it, it's part of my routine schedule. I work, I work on what's called a 410B schedule, so my Mondays are off, and uh, I work I work 10 hours a day for the four days of the week. You know, actually, I, I prefer that. I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but like 12 hours, so mm-hmm. I, I enjoy having Mondays and Fridays. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, with the holidays, it helped a lot because um, it allowed me to struggle things out a little bit. And plus, I get a lot of flexibility. That was one thing that I did like about being in the medical field. He's dying over here, by the way. Yeah, Um, because I worked worked three tens, and that was full time. So I'd work three ten hours. I didn't ever actually only work 30 hours in a week. Mm -hmm. Typically... Because we had tons of overtime availability and stuff, and I would end up staying there late or coming in early, whatever the case might be. But as far as like eligibility for different things, 30 hours was considered full time. Um, that way, any nurses or anybody that worked 312s or anything like that, I just happened to work 310s. So typically, or so I'm sorry, that's what I was scheduled. That's not typically what I worked, I should say. All right. So I have a question. Who is the person that you have investigated most on, I guess it's Twitter X. Is that where you're most known? I, I'm sorry. I'm not on social media. So that's I, where we I, met think, each other, I so. think that, that that's what I was Twitter. piecing together yeah. that you guys met that way. Is that where you primarily do your investigations or. 
No, it's more of a hobby, but um, but I, 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 I'm trying to think back on it. Um, there was a good dude in South Carolina. His name is Mook. Uh, Mook? And, yeah, M-O-O-C-K. I'll tell you about the guy. Okay, so, yes, please tell me. I have, uh, I have a couple of friends uh, on Twitter that know, somewhat know the guy. Okay. Um, he was in the military as a, an infantry, I believe he was. And, mm-hmm. by the way, this all happened before you did all, so it's been a while. Okay. Um, before you guys went to Matt. Yeah. Okay. So, he went to, to Kuwait and Germany, and I think most of the time with Dick died. He claimed, now, by the way, he's a gay man, which I have no problem with him being gay. I don't give a shit about that. Right. But he claimed that his boyfriend in the military was killed in action in Iraq. Okay. Which, okay, fine, if you take that a face value. When, but this is, this is one of those. Um, uh, not that wasn't what brought it up. He, he had any other thing that was suspicious. But when he started talking about the story, we looked into the story of his mm-hmm. old boyfriend that was killed in the rest. And Turned roughly out, what year was the boyfriend killed? Um, 2008, I believe. Okay. And his name is Tashmir, uh, kind of like the region of India. And, uh, Tashmir was in a convoy. And he, the driver was exhausted, rolled over. He's in the gun, he's in the gun attack. And uh, when the vehicle rolled over, the hat hit his head and killed him. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, Muff claimed that was his boyfriend. Okay. And that he made up tons of embellishments about the guy. Turned out that Casper had a boyfriend, uh, I'm sorry, a girlfriend. Uh, and a daughter. Okay. So you see where this is going. Right. So, Mark was claiming fantastical stories about him. So, I'm a gay, I, I'm a decorated veteran. I had a gay boyfriend, so on and so forth. He was clinging to things that was not really real. Okay. That pissed me off. And so we exposed them. Uh, we told all the local BFW saying, tell the judge to fuck off. We also contacted a couple of the American Legion, also tell them, tell them to fuck off because, you know, his story was not on the up and up. Right. And he had the audacity to go visit the grave of the guy that was killed. And we even told that the church that took care of the grave to tell him to, to go F off. And so, the, it, and by the way, I follow his wife, uh, follow the KI wife on Twitter, and she has been an actor for years, but her daughter's all growing up now. She's, well, I, I believe, 19 now. And so, yeah, because it's been that long. Again. And there's absolutely and, no chance that he was living a double life? No. It'd be hard no, to keep it no secret chance. for that long, because eventually, you know, family member you know, sends in your death certificate and stuff to Facebook and gets access and that maybe, maybe they didn't want to be transparent about it. Maybe they wanted to, you know, to keep the memory intact, but probably not. But there, there, there were a couple of problems with the story too. When he claimed he was with the guy at certain point in time, he was actually in state side. Gotcha. Or he was actually in Germany. Which is where his motor pool company was. Gotcha. So he, and uh, one one of the guys Kelly on Twitter that I, I, I talk with Kelly all the time. He knew him through the same company as he was, but he got injured uh, in in a military training thing up in Germany, so he didn't get to go to Iraq. Okay. And so he wasn't with the guy. So they they just split off on that point, but he knew him and was like, yeah. At the time that Casper was in Germany, Muck was claiming that he was with him at the time in Kuwait. Gotcha. So a lot so, of So the, the whole double life doesn't make sense. Right. Okay. Interesting. I'm, I'm, so what, what would be the motive there? That's what I was yeah, getting at. Like, yeah. why? 
Why would he come up with a story? A couple of things. Uh, Bragging stories in the American Legion and the BFW. BFW. Uh, because those are Cubs, you know, it just established credentials, you know. Uh, and two, uh, LGBTQ things. Okay. Just, uh, just a claim of story. Interesting. All. I mean, still not, still not following on a on a good motive. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what do you think um, is the craziest story? So, we're um, actually haven't checked. Uh, Twitter, but it's supposed to be uh, having Anthony Anderson from Guardian of Valor on as well, either today or Friday. And uh, I know that you guys have a little bit back and forth. Have you worked with him at all? Uh, I've not worked with him. He did suggest that uh, to invite me on, but I'm not taking a bonus off with because he made a couple, uh, made a post about a month or so ago saying, "Hey, if I was to bring him in, you know." And I and I was thinking about it. I probably I'm I'm just too busy to do helpful. I'm more than happy to help on the public side of things, but as far as helping him, I, I get the I get the post process and everything in terms of FOIA and in terms of submitting the SF eighty one eighty to NPRC and so forth. I've done it for the years, so I know the process. Um, the way Anderson does it, 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 it's extremely done well, and he has a lot of good meaning behind it. And um, so, for example, the public saw yesterday, uh, some guy was trying to drag Anderson into a critical Twitter fight, and and Anderson was like, "I'm like, I don't even know what's going on," and I and I interjected for him, and I, just I pointed did see out, that. Saying, this morning, I Anderson, yeah, Anderson not gonna be your political end all, so knock it off." And the guy was like, "Well, what you're doing is sus. I just want to know what embassy the guy was in front of." I'm like. So it was a it was a marine that had posted. He he, when I looked at his uh, Twitter or from his own screenshot that he provided, um, he kind of made it seem like he was libertarian, but definitely not conservative leaning. Okay. And somebody responded to him saying, "What embassy are you standing in front of?" It's him in his in his uniform a couple of years back and he was like wouldn't you like to know or something like that and the guy was like oh stolen valor you it's not even really you and he's like what yeah so simply because the guy didn't want to tell him what embassy he was standing in front of it's stolen valor he was trying to drag uh anthony anderson guardian of valor into it mm -hmm. to investigate somebody simply because they didn't want to tell him what building they were standing in front of because he didn't like his okay. political views. Here's my two cents. You guys have way too much free time on your hands. Get off fucking Twitter. <laughs> well, some people. Some people need to get off fucking Twitter. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, Anthony, he, that's, like, I actually don't even know what he does outside of that. I don't know if he's disabled or anything like that, but mm -hmm. I know he's trying to bring that project back, like, big time. He's working directly with, um, oh, my gosh. The t-shirt company and i can't um well, i've talked about style. ordered a bunch style. Of yeah yeah ground style no no no, not that oh. that's uh bunker branding no um yeah so they brought them onto their podcast okay recently him and uh chuck ritter because of chuck's whole story that's we can talk about that a whole nother day because that's wild i have no um, idea who you're talking about he's a uh, uh soon to be retired i think he's getting pretty close um uh, Green Bray Special Operations Sergeant okay. Major, and there was a whole. It, it wasn't actually domestic violence, but people were trying to claim that it was. There were some videos that came out, and he was just he was actually falsely accused. He had the videos and the recordings and all this and that. And Does it sound familiar at all? No, no, no. It's completely different from the Glover okay. thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this guy was uh, is well liked and well respected. Okay. And, um, yeah, he just, people just ran with some information that like the, the videos that they were taking and running with were videos that were literally clearing his name and saying that he was in the wrong. How many years ago did this happen? Just recently within the last year or so. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, guy. So they went on, um, if uh, I recall quote. If I recall correctly, that was a domestic dispute between one of his soldiers 
and the wife. Yeah. And then the wife would make an accusation against him, yeah. claiming he was trying to get with her. Yep. If I oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Yeah, so there's a there's a video. He's completely calm and everything, and they're trying to help uh, the soldier, like, get stuff, like, his belongings. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, this whole, it's this whole thing. And she wasn't able to provide receipts that he was, quote, Basically. unquote, trying to get with her. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and I believe the writer from, forget his name, he, no, nobody in the special forces movie at him anymore, but he worked, he's the one that started the whole Ritter um, attack pieces against him, and it was pretty much completely BS. Yeah, because he was, he was like, in, in, he was creating the story. He wasn't, like, he didn't have a story to work with. He was creating something that didn't get that makes sense. Andrew. What? When do you think somebody's going to create a story about you? I'm not famous enough for anybody to care. <laughs> right. So give us a timeline. Let's see. Probably three years never. from now, somebody's no. going to come out and be like, he knocked me up and then he made me abort the baby. Nah. And then, and then. Nah, that'll never happen. <laughs> so everything that can come out has basically already been published on Facebook because. Oh, not, yeah? Like not, what? Just the dumb shit that we did. Like, I don't know, like giving soldiers fucking, I don't know, starting IVs in their ass and shit like that. Just What? <laughs> I'm saying all... specific to you. Yeah, no, I'm saying like there's... <laughs> oh my God. You could basically document my entire life in the military. On your like in... 175 page from the VA? No, that was like 1600. Whatever. No, um, <laughs> the, the uh, social media posts. Because that's when Facebook had just kind of gotten off the ground, became popular. Yeah. And we were always posting because they had nothing else, like nothing better to do. Okay. Like there's the pictures of us, like the one guy, uh, Cotton's birthday at Camp Darby, taking him out in the, what we called the box, the training area. Okay. And tying him to a skeg coat loader and throwing him into the fucking pond. And- oh my God. <laughs> This is all already on social media, so... Andrew. What? What? Very, very bad decisions. Nah, he was fine. He was our fishing bait. Terrible human being. In in his defense, everyone who joined the military made a bad decision. Yeah. Right, joining to begin with. That is your first bad decision. (laughs) The youngest um, is considered it, and he's talked about it. Oh he's, yeah, he's, he's obsessed hyped. with World War Two. Yeah. Obsessed. So you could you can name a specific vessel, or a specific unit, or a specific date and time, mm-hmm. and he can tell you specific battle. Yeah, who, who the was general there, was, what happened, everything. Yeah, casualty numbers. He can tell you, all, and he's eight years old. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's cool. He's your little prodigy. I, I didn't teach him any of this stuff. I know. He teaches me know, this stuff. I know. But I, you are so proud. Well, 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 it's a very colorful history. For example, my connection with World War II, for example, my grandfather was in World War II. And he was actually going to be drafted into World War II. And this was, happened back in 1940, by the way. 1940 before the war started. And in order to avoid the draft, he actually volunteered for the Army. And it was a safe route, safe route at the time. And so where did he get sent to? The Philippines. And uh, he go, so he got sent over to the Philippines. He's in the Coastal Artillery Corps. And so he's one of those batteries around Fort, uh, was it Fredador? Uh, some, someone around those islands. And, and then now you think, oh, no war going to break out in the, in the East. But the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. And then a d- couple of days later, they started attacking the Philippines. And my grandfather just caught in the middle of that. And and what happened was, um, uh, after Corridor fell, he was taken captive by the Japanese under General Rainwright, and so he went to Bataan Death March, oh, wow. uh, from Corridor all the way uh, on, all the way to Bataan, I believe, or was it Luzon? I can't remember if where in Jackie. And then he gets taken on the health trip, and the health trip was basically just. The Tainoir strip, you know, they put, they load up all the prisoners inside the cargo hold, 
not barely give them why some water and uh but and if they ran out of provision and what they did they drink each other's pair and and then that they go all the way up to Pusan, korea at the time they dropped off half the men on that strip uh half the men and went to the mine in mongolia and but he stayed on the ship and he was taken to Osaka, japan and from Osaka, he was going to prison war camp there and then he got moved up to up to Tucharuga, which is up north of Osaka, and he was there for the rest of the war. And he was viewed as day labor for loading a ship at the dock, and okay. that was and until the bomb dropped. Wow. How old is he? Is he still alive? Um, I should say. Uh, no, he he died before I was born. Oh well, I'm sorry. But we share the same birthday, so that's probably the only similarity that we have. Wow. Aww. My uh. My buddy uh, from high school, he's going to be going down to uh, Texas with his grandpa, who's 100, and uh, he was in the Marines during World War II, and then my buddy was in the Marines, so they're going to be on the unsubscribe podcast here in the next couple of weeks or months or so. I don't, I don't, I don't know when they're exactly scheduling it, but he reached out to me. I guess unsubscribe put out uh, a request if anybody still had any living relatives or anybody that listened to the podcast that wanted to be on. And so he's going to go down there and tell the story. When I met him when I was a kid, I didn't even know that he was a veteran. I didn't even know until my buddy TJ's wedding that his grandpa was a veteran. And he, this was 10, 10 years ago, nine years ago. And I mean, super spry old, like still out there on the dance floor and stuff like that. That had been 90, 91 years old at the time. Um, so yeah, he's he's up to fly down there, but the stories and things like that, that's actually one of the things that uh, Cash, the youngest, liked most about watching Band of Brothers with me is he enjoyed hearing them talk and tell their story. And then you watch, you know, the editorialized version of it in the show itself. And that's the only time that kid with any length of time, you know, they talk about the attention span mm -hmm. of an eight-year-old or... Mm -hmm anybody in that range he sat there i mean legs crossed sitting on the couch leaning forward eyes wide open jaw fully intent just wouldn't even move like taking it all in i put in a request with my family grandfather's diary detailing when he was in world war ii and so far nobody's been able to track it down which is really sad because i know that, where would it be well my grandmother passed away uh, right before COVID and it was with her belongings and everything got dispersed between all eight children and nobody has record as to where That's my grandfather's diary went, which is really sad because I know he would love to read it. But you know, you know, one, one of the craziest things about the military and veteran community is when something like that turns up and somebody posts about it on Reddit or Twitter. They find the relatives very fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, like they'll say, Hey, I don't know whose this is. And they'll like, Oh, there's the markings or there's a date. And like within a week, sometimes like most of the time shorter than that. There's also well, times when people are like, they'll find something at like the, the thrift shop and they're like, this looks really cool. It looks right. like it might've belonged to somebody yeah. and they yeah, return yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, the, the ribbon and the badge that tell the story all, all by themselves. So for example, uh, a World War II, uh, ribbon, it's basically yellow with red and blue bars. So you know that the world will work too bad, for example. And then you go by the unit and they'll say uh, the unit crest, for example. And you can kind of narrow it down to where that person was. And you can be able to try to decipher from that point on. And then you can call up the, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you can call up the unit and say, hey, who's been, who's been awarded so so? And then they try to try to narrow it down to that point. And well, however, the however to this, sometimes they don't always work out because records were also kept well kept back then too. Because a lot of people got a lot of awards for things that weren't recorded. Yeah. And it happened. Yeah, I uh, so I have a funny story that I'm going to tell Anthony about. I haven't like talked about this on social media maybe a couple times, but um, when I was at Benning was before they were allowing women into combat MOSs and uh, additional schools like Ranger School and stuff like that. And I was sitting on staff duty one day at headquarters 
And I get this call. I don't want to say it was on a weekend because there was nobody else there. It was just myself and the other NCO that were there for the or for the 24 hour uh, staff duty shift. And I answer the call and it's a warrant officer out of Fort Leonard Wood. And he says, Hey, this is chief so-and-so out of Fort Leonard Wood. Got a question for you. I'm like, sure, go ahead. Hey, I got a, I got a private here wearing a Ranger tab. And I was just wondering when Ranger school started allowing women to come through. And I was like, I looked at the other NCO and I was like, we haven't, there's not like been a pilot program or anything for women to come through Ranger school. Right. Like I'm not going to sound like an idiot when I respond. He's like, no, never. And I was like, uh, sir, never. And he was like, okay, I've got an ass to take care of. And I was like, <laughs> all right. Yes. And so to this day, I've wondered what happened to that woman. Like I, I, Obviously, like she's not going to get like in a lot of trouble. She, I mean, depending on what else she had done to get to that point. But I mean, just walking around with the Ranger tab as a woman at that point in time, people are going to know. So it might just been like, hey, why are you wearing that? Where'd you get that? You didn't earn that. Maybe a slap on the wrist or maybe there might have been some UCMJ that, you know, went along with it. But I've wondered to this day what <laughs> so happened. So you want to ask? Stolen Valor guy, if no, we can track down no, 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 what no. happened to her. No, I just, because, you know, he's going to have a ton of stories mm -hmm. because there's people, both cases that he's worked on and then ones that he's never been able to get around to. Mm -hmm. And so I want to know what some of the craziest ones are, gotcha. as well as some of the ones that he's heard about and just, you know, never got around to, or it was already taken care of before he got involved. Gotcha. What about there, by the way? 2009. 2010. Probably. No way. Def definitely not a wheel then. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't at the time. But I, I just, I wasn't 100% certain because I was like, maybe like, because the, the way that he was describing it, I, I wish, you know, we had recorded phone calls and stuff like that. Like, because I don't obviously remember all the details, but it just, and it was only years before. They actually started, they, they had the pilot program. I think that was what, 2013, 2014? Right, you, were, you were covering your ass by, you know, double checking with the person who was there. Yeah, because that's... Know, so I many... don't want to answer incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I knew the answer, mm -hmm. but at the same time... Right. Just needed to verify yeah, before yeah, you say yeah, absolutely yeah. the fuck not. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you have any other questions for him? Do you have any other crazy stories or anything that you've been involved in that... That's really um, stuck on your mind and... Not necessarily. I'm just a quiet guy who just always commented on stuff. And, um, but crazy, not really. Uh, I mean, the Glover story is not so much crazy. I just followed it because the reason, the one reason why I started talking about it was people were too, were upset that people would bother, were talking about what should have been private affairs. Okay. And because saying, oh, it's a private affair between him and his wife. Nobody has the right to know what's going on. I'm like, not, that's not true. It's all public record, so I'm just going to go. And I got all the documents from Utah State Court to prove a point that is public record. Right. right. And, and then yesterday, when I, I, thought, I, I, I DM'd you about this, but Garvey yesterday went on a spiel about um, a, a, of how supposedly corrupt the Utah court system is. Okay. And, and then he also made another post on Twitter yesterday saying, they got me confused with someone in Utah. They're gonna, they're gonna Mike A, Mike, Mike A. Gover in, uh, in the state and with a lengthy criminal record. And I'm like, and I, and I looked into the guy. The only thing he's been busted for was, well, he got busted for another thing. Pot, which was dismissed with president, aggravated assault with us and put her down, and you gotta get off with the right symptoms. So it's not a big deal. And the other one was, uh, talk is shipped to an officer and not, make, not a big deal. Who cares? And that, that's already a lengthy criminal record. And, mm -hmm. and I doubt, and I doubt that the Provo police would even confuse Mike Gover with someone from Salt Lake. Yes, even though Provo is 50 miles away from Salt Lake, I doubt they will be confusing two different people with two different birth dates. And so, and, and so I think Mike Gover will just, uh, catering to his audience to get sympathy from from the people saying, oh, woe is me. Right. I got booked. The system is against me. 
because I am a guy that's white wing. And I'm like, no, you got to, uh, there was a legitimate report. It's not the hospital because mandatory reported called at the police because they suspected domestic violence. Right. And unfortunately, and unfortunately, the world did not have, have to get Mike Garber. The laws were created before Mike Garber was a fan. Right. Okay? Yep. So, domestic violence laws are put in to protect, generally, women and children. Right. Looking good intention behind it. So, to, to, to think that the law was created for one Mike Garber is absurd because something can happen. Yeah, we, and, we still have people in our comments still talking about it on both videos that are and are not related to it. Um, there's been a guy going back and forth telling me I have screenshots of your comments. And I'm like, okay, my comments are I'm saying, here's the link. <laughs> like, what's your point? And I'd never heard of him until Andrew told me about what was happening. And... Well, you knew kind of who he was. Because I, I did um, contract uh, marketing work for FCS a couple of years ago. So she kind of, like didn't know who he was specifically. No, because he you was just basically stated never call, the but... company's name. You never told me the CEO or who was your direct contact or anything. You just said, I'm doing some work for Fieldcraft. The end. Cool. Go. Thumbs up. <laughs> Good job. I yeah, didn't I, know about this guy at all. Yeah, I, I, I hadn't heard about Mike Garber for, at all either until I think I believe I got to Utah and then I heard about him and I'm like, oh, he's some big uh, survivor expert and down in Provo. I'm like, okay, cool. Don't care. And, uh, then, uh, then after I moved to Florida, then he started popping up in the news and I'm like, oh, what's this about? And then, well, I started looking again and then I, I'm on the, the court document. Unfortunately, the kid's information is transparent right there. That's not my fault. That's Utah County that put that information in there. And that's how, when the first report of him came out on Reddit, I believe it was, they were... Un unredacted, right? Yeah. And I, but that, that exists to the best of my knowledge. The last time, but I you redacted them, there. right? I redacted every single one of them. I always redact addresses, emails, and phone numbers of um, so code just for my safety because right. I don't want to get banned on Twitter. Right. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, I, I, you know, the the comments that we were getting is that you know we doxed his children and all this stuff. I was like, we never even. Nothing we ever posted or talked about had literally anything. don't even yeah. know his children's names. Yeah. So I Yeah, I mean, anyway. Yeah, you can tell you can tell from these people's comments that they're just anybody that isn't pro Mike, they just assume is who Mike is talking about. So I, I don't know. Um, but like I said, uh, as to the best of my knowledge, the the Reddit thread was still up with the original documents. And I mean, once it's out, it's out. So anybody that Nothing nope. on the internet ever goes away. Yeah. No, it won't. Uh, here's what my theory was going to be happening. Small, the case is probably going to be thrown out, or the public going to dismiss it. That's my theory. Um, tomorrow is about so, the property damage, correct? No, tomorrow's about the calling. Oh, the calling. Yeah. The property damage got dismissed? To the best of my knowledge. Yeah, yes, it did. Yeah. That was the yes, one thing that I thought was going to stick, because they probably it's not came his... an agreement outside of court. Like, hey, I'll pay you, it, I'll It's fix not the his door. property. Okay. Yeah, anyway, it'll get, sorry. It'll probably you'll get the door so they can fix that. Not a big deal. Um, but yeah, so here's what I think gonna happen. I believe there's a case in DCF DCFS, which is the uh, Department of Children and Family Services. And I believe there's still a case going on with my cover. Obviously, those are private. We're never gonna know the outcome of that because right. that's pretty confidential from the public sphere because again, it's for the best interest of the children. Right. So we we're never going to know the outcome. Only Mike Garber and his wife can talk about that if they choose to do so. Oh, so is she actually his, his wife or his is girlfriend. it his girlfriend? It's, because it's girlfriend. That, there was conflicting information about that too. And I was curious. That 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 was weird because um, it's actually his girlfriend. Because, and then when he started saying my spouse, technically he's correct because under Utah law, there's common law marriage. We looked oh, it up and we thought there wasn't. Utah, I don't remember what the exact thing was. Utah, Utah does have common law marriage. Okay. And so I, I've been in, been there long enough. But yes, they do have common law marriage because they, it, 
it's obviously not in dispute that they've been together for that per- long period of time. Mm-hmm. So the law I'm not going to say, we doubt they're going to be married. We doubt them in a common law marriage. Gotcha. They're not going to dispute that. So, so that's, so that, so technically he can get away with saying it's my fault, which is fine. Um, but as far as the DCFS case goes, he said there's a restraining order against him. So this is my theory, my personal opinion, not the law, not facts, and etc. Um, I think what happened was the DCFS court case said to the criminal court saying, we're going to take the case from you. Will adjudicate this our way, and so please dismiss the charge against Mike Tubb. Gotcha. And we'll take care of the children arrangement between the parents. So, because this is remember for the best interest of the child. Right. So I don't think they are out to persecute Mike Tubb because he's a famous cat. Right. Now. The reason why the cop uh, filed the charge was because Mike Grubber did break the law, calling from prison, trying to pressure his girlfriend. Right. If you were to say he's guilty of that. So if Pogo got a prosecute for that, for that, that'll be misdemeanor because there's no felony charges. Fine, whatever. He paid the fine. Who cares? He just to go on his like, There's no domestic violence modifier to that. So he get, if he pays a pay the fine or serves no serves less than a year in jail, he's still gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. And he's not gonna lose his gun rights, he's not gonna lose his income because he's still under the name. Right. So I think he's gonna be ahead of the game so far. He got really lucky getting all these drugs and dismissed uh in terms of the domestic violence modifier. He got and lucky having a girlfriend who didn't want to say anything against him. We don't know that yet because we don't know what the situation is with his girlfriend in terms of him. Now, we all we have is what my daughter say, not what she said. Now, we know that she was represented by a lawyer in court, a different lawyer, different from his lawyer. So, could they be splitting up? We don't know. What annoyed me is people on uh, social media arguing for Mike Glover saying, well, she's crazy, she's got mental issues, and so on and so forth. Well, here's a, here's a couple of problems with that. She would have been cared. She already had a psych, psych evaluation. He's fine. Mike Glover, on the other hand, he's already admitted he's got anxiety issues. He's already admitted that he's taking drugs. So, who's got the mental issues? So, anyway, so, and I'm not saying he's got mental problems. I'm just saying that was what he uttered. Right. Yeah, I, the the whole thing, I mean, like we said in the very first episode that we talked about it was, you need to stay off social media, lay low, you know, and that was it. And people were mad about that. <laughs> like, we yeah. don't want you to talk about it at all, okay? Everybody, people are talking about it. Even if it's not on a podcast, people are talking about it. You're not going to shut everyone up. And, you know, it deserves, people deserve to know what's going on. Um, they can form whatever decision that they want after they know, but they still deserve to know. You can still respect him. You can still buy his product in his class. Nobody's stopping you. Like, to the best of my knowledge, there's no law in which a podcast can stop you from buying somebody's classes. But, some of the comments that I've seen on Reddit, like, were just, I don't know, like, the, the community in general did not seem to like Mike. And that's... Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, there's only a few people that within those, within that, I don't even want to call it industry, but within that um, brotherhood, there Former are very... Cambrai. Yeah, there are very few people that everybody just altogether doesn't like. So that number could probably be counted on one or two hands. Oh, wow. Outside of that, you have people that just have personal beef or they don't know right. somebody or, you know, whatever. Like, oh, I was there with him and I didn't really like how he did this. But otherwise, you know, whatever. I don't have an issue with him. Like, that's the majority of what you see mm. with most people. And that's the majority of what you see with most people in any industry. Right. 
not every mus musician likes every musician, not every construction worker likes every construction worker. It's just, that's just the way it is. Nobody, not everybody has to like everybody either, but. Facts. Um, appreciate your time. Yes. Uh, Thank you for giving us your day off. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Hey, if I can add one thing, there's yeah. one person that everyone does not like, and that's Luke Barkin. Who is it? Luke Barkin. You don't know who he is? It sounds familiar. He's the guy that won that polygamous court out in Tennessee. He does the speed run. He feeds up all his videos. And so basically just... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't know the, the name, but yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Everyone does not like him. I'm going to show you. Okay, because I have no idea who the fuck <laughs> you're talking about. Oh, that's a whole other story, but I'm not going to talk about it. But, but thank you for your time, though. On the next time that you come on, you yeah. can tell us all about it. <laughs> yeah, if you're ever in North Carolina, hit us up. Let us know. Um, where can everybody well, I'm down. Or if you're coming down to Florida, either way. Yeah, we might. We'll see. We'll see? Yeah. I don't know. Florida is the herpes of the United States. I don't know if we're coming down there. Whatever. <laughs> it has its up and down. <laughs> it has its up and downs. Are you going to stay safe for the hurricane coming? Uh, I'm, I'm with it in them, so I'll be fine. Okay. All right. Just a lot of rain, probably. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Most definitely. Cool. Well, cool. Um, Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Should I should I just put your uh, Twitter link down in the comments? Yeah, do it. That way, everybody any other, can follow any other, him. Any other place people can find you, or you want them to find you? No, just that. Just Twitter, fine. All right. Go find him on Twitter. We'll put yes. the link down in the comments. He's got for all a of lot you of, guys on Twitter. Yeah, a lot even of, though I said get off of Twitter. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, Have we appreciate day. your time. Thanks yes, for coming thank on. Thank you. Have a good day. Yep. Have a great day. Bye. Wait, how do I? <laughs> Can't figure out how to exit. Yeah. <laughs>